Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at derivatives numerically from tables and also using data. We're going to use a table to find the approximation of a derivative. Since there's a lot of tables and information on these examples, I made a notes page for you. The screens are a screenshots already done. You could either have picked that up in class, a notes page in class, or also put a copy of it on Blackboard if you want to download that. It would make it a little easier to take notes on it. You don't have to spend the time writing down the examples. Um, but these are the things that we're going to do in this video. Please write the objectives, and don't forget we're still using two column notes. All right, the first example that we want to do is um, we're given a table of values. You can see x and then f of x. Um, and they want to estimate the derivative at, at 2. All right? So what we're looking is this function here. We're not given a graph and we're not given the actual equation, but we do know that it is some kind of function. So say, for instance, it's a, it's a function, like some kind of curvy function, right? And we want to see where x is 2 here. We want to know what is the slope or the average change at that point. That's what we're after, all right? So there's a couple of ways to do this. and. Um, Basically, what we're doing is taking the average rate of change, but we're having to estimate it because we don't actually know for sure what it is. So, for instance, since 2 is in the chart and in the table, then what we can do is we can find the average, the slope, or the slope, um, average rate of change or slope, um, from 2 to 4 or to the right. So we're going to find uh, the slope to the right, to, from 2, x equals 2, to x equals 4. And then we're going to find the slope to the left, so from 0 to 2. And then what we're going to do then is average those two slopes, average 1 and 2. And that's what we would do here. So this is to the right, this one's to the left, and then we're going to take the average of those, and that will be um, the derivative at 2. All right, so if we do 1, right, we're going to take um, 4, let's see, we'll have uh, 6 minus 5 over 4 minus 2, and so that's going to be 1 half. All right, number 2, we're going to have 2 minus 0, oops, I'm upside down again, 5 minus 3, sorry, y over x, 5 minus 3 over 2 minus 0, and that's going to be 2 over 2, which is 1. So now what we're going to do is average those two together. So on the third one, we're going to take, you remember how to find an average, you add them together and divide by 2. So I have 1 half plus 1 divided by 2, that's going to be 3 halves times 1 over 2. So the average of that, average slope, is going to be 3 fourths. Now notice that that's an estimate, and so that's, how, that's one way of finding it, to the right, to the left, and then average those two together. So now what happens if we are given a table and we're asked to estimate, estimate something that is between, right, between, um, not actually one of the ones that we um, that is listed in the table. And so we can see that it's going to be between 1.4 and 1.6. So instead of doing right, left, and then averaging them, we're just going to average between uh, the two that it lies between. So we're going to have 1 point, I'm upside down again, 12 minus 16 over 1.4 minus 1.6. Now it doesn't matter whether you do it that way or you flip them around those equal the same thing. So we have um, 4 over 0.2 and 4 over 0.2 is going to equal 20. So if you do this with fractions, you've got 0.2 is 2 tenths. So flip it over, you've got 40 over 2, which is 20. All right, so the estimate then for that, the derivative at 1.5 is going to be 20. So here's another example. Um, the table gives the values of a differential function from 0 to 1. Find the derivative at 0.1. All right, so 0.1 is over here at this 
at this left side. And so once again, the original was to go to the right, go to the left, and average. But they have not given us all that data. So what we really want to do on this one is we're just going to be able to go to the right. So another way to write this would say f of 0 0.20 minus f of 0 0.10 over 0 0.20 minus 0 0.10. And so this would be 0 0.433 minus 0 0.261 over 0 0.1 and throw that in your calculator and you will get 1.72. It's not too bad once you've done a couple of examples. The next concept that we want to talk about is using symbolic differentiation. Now we found the derivatives using the power rule, the chain rule, the quotient rule, um, product rule, um, but we, had, we always had a function that we were finding that for. In this particular case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the derivatives um, after we've been given some values. All right, so let's look at the values. We'll inspect the values that we've been given. This is not a derivative. This is the point 2, negative 4. This is the derivative. This is the derivative at 2 at that function, which is 8. This is the point 2, 3 on the g function. The derivative at 2 is negative 1. And then the derivative on the f function, the derivative at 3, is negative 2. And we want to find each of the derivatives of the following at x equals 2. At x equals 2. All right. So we have the, a, something called the symbolic. So we know that this here is the product rule. This is the product rule. Now we don't have a function. All we have is this notation. So let's write the product rule using the notation. This would be the second times the derivative of the first plus the first times the derivative of the second. All right, and we're being asked to find the derivative at x equals 2. Right, so if we rewrite that, we have g of 2, f prime of 2, plus f of 2, g prime of 2. And then we go back to the data that we were given. And it says, what is g of 2? Well, g of 2 is 3. What's f prime of 2? Well, f prime of 2 is 8. And that's a times in between, then a plus. f of 2 is negative 4. And g prime of 2 is negative 1. So you have 24 plus 4, which is 28. That's how that works. All right? Over here, we have, looks like to me, the chain rule, right? Chain rule. So we're going to take the derivative symbolically, right? So we take the derivative of the outside. So that will be 3f of x squared times the derivative of the inside. And the only thing left to do now is to put a 2 in here, right? And write it out. So I have... 3, f of 2 is negative 4 squared. You have to read it carefully. And then f prime of 2 is 8. So we have 16, this is 16, times 3 is 48, times 8 is 384. Same problem, same data. Symbolic, right? This is the quotient rule. So this is low. It's still at 2. Low d high minus high d low over low squared. Okay, so that's your symbolic. So we have um, g2 is 3 times f prime of 2, which is 8, minus f of 2, which is negative 4, and g prime of 2, which is negative 1, all over 3 squared. 
So we have 24 minus 4, it looks like, over 9. So that's going to be 20 over 9. Now, this one, D, is a composition function, right? Composition function, which is we use the chain rule. Chain rule. All right, so we have um, a different way of writing this than we did before, but we take f of x, right? So we say um, it is the, um, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. And then we put a 2 in, right? So we have f of, sorry, f prime of, what is g of 2? Well, g of 2 is 3 times, and g prime of 2 is negative 1. And then f prime of 3, you were wondering why we had that, is uh, negative 2 times negative 1, which is 2. So the key to this is writing it in symbolic form and then substituting the values that they give you. And if sometimes, you know, you're given a table or something, you're not able to find the values. So here's another example that's given in a, um, in a slightly different form. Um, but you do it you do it the same way, right? It has everything that you need, all those different values. It's just that they're organized into a table. All right, so A is find the derivative of f of x plus g of x evaluated at x equals 4. Okay, so that means that it's going to be f prime of x plus g prime of x. And for the x, we're going to substitute a 4. So we go on here and we find f prime, uh, where x is 4, and that's this, negative 4 fifths. And then we find g prime at 4, minus 1 third, and that's going to be something over 15. So negative 12 minus 5 is negative 17 fifths. All right, so this is just the power rule, right? Power rule. And this is the product rule. And so you write it, it's uh, second times the derivative of the first plus the first times the derivative of the second, where x is 1. All right, so I find here's 1, right? So g of 1 is 1. f prime of 1 is 5 thirds. f of 1 is 1 third. And g prime of 1 is 2 thirds. So I have uh, 5 thirds plus 2 ninths, 3 15. So that should be 17 ninths. For homework, I would like you to work this one. Take a second here at the end of this video and go ahead and write this uh, out, write it out, and then find the value. Okay? and I will see you in class.